Hey guys, it's Dr. May. How's it going? So um, I want to talk to you today about a topic called uh, conscience and moral reasoning. Okay, so um, we're all trying to do the best we can and we try to do the right thing. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what that is or how I can make better decisions. So um, I want to just kind of give an overview of this because it might help inform um, the way we go about things and the way we develop our wise mind, okay? Um, so that's the scoop. All right, so here we go. All right, oops, conscience and moral reasoning. All right, the little devil and the angel on your shoulder. All right, kind of a common image that comes to mind when we think about these sorts of things, right? Because sometimes we're, we're dealing with those two different opposing forces in our mind, okay? Kind of like a dialectic. All right, so um, like I was starting to say, um, if you're in DBT, you've heard about wise mind before, but in case you haven't heard about it, it's a concept that they talk about where it's, it's a part of us that sees the whole picture, that tries to see things broadly, that tries to use our pure sense of loving awareness to guide our decisions and to do something that feels like it's in line with our values and our morals and our ethics, okay? So if we're saying make a wise mind decision, it only makes sense that we should have a better grasp on what that means, right? So how do we know we're acting with our conscience and our morals and our values when we're using our wise mind if we're not super clear about those concepts, right? So I figured it's best to just explore them a little bit more today, okay? All right, so just to define a couple of things, all right? So morality, right? So morality is actually defined as like principles of right and wrong or like goodness and badness, right? So literally like that devil and the angel. So the devil's considered bad and the angel's considered good. By like some things we do are considered bad and some things are considered good. Who decides that? There's a lot of background to that, which we'll talk around, talk about in a minute. Um, it's also considered to be holding or manifesting high principles for proper conduct, right? And that's a little open to interpretation too, but generally like kind of taking the high road, like how do we figure out what's, the most moral high course of action, right? Related to morality, <clears throat> kind of like definitions crossing a little bit, is ethics, right? So when you talk about being ethical. So ethical just means moral principles, we just talked about morality, that governs a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. So ethics is just applying the sense of right and wrong or good and bad, right? When we're making decisions, right? So they're kind of very similar concepts, right? A slightly different concept, is conscience, right? I'm sure you've heard about conscience before, right? Don't you have a conscience, <laughs> right? And stuff like that, or he has no conscience. So what do they actually mean by that? What they really mean is a sense of obligation based on emotional connection, a feeling of attachment or connection to other living beings, right? In Buddhism, they talk about other sentient beings, which basically means all living beings that are, that are around. Okay, so not just even human to human, but human to animal, human to amoeba, human to whatever, right? And just by the fact that we're all living, we're interconnected, right? Even when they look at quantum physics, on a deeper level, we're all interconnected, right? We're connected to each other and even the earth. <clears throat> okay, so keeping all that in mind as we make decisions is about acting with conscience, right? That I'm not just a separate entity, where my actions don't affect anybody but myself, right? Everything I do has a ripple effect that affects others. It's important for me, acting with conscience, to keep that interconnection in mind, okay? So that's the, the gist of conscience, right? So morality, right and wrong, conscience about interconnection, okay? So um, here's a, a few fun facts, right? I like to throw in fun facts where I can. So Back in history, um, there was a guy named St. Jerome, who I don't know a whole lot about, but um, he came up with a concept called synderesis, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But basically what that meant is that conscience, from his view, came from God, right? It was, it's, it's more of something like a spiritual concept where we all have a little bit of God in us, a little bit of spirit in us, and so we're connected to the larger infinite God, and therefore, we have a little bit of the morality from God within us, right? So if we look deep within, we have access to that conscience that is very connected to the divine, right? So that's how, that was his view, right? So it implies that people innately know the absolute truth, 
right? If you really clear away all, you know, your own crazy thoughts, deep down, you know, the truth, okay? The God-given truth and the absolute right action, okay? So then um, in the age of reason, which came a little bit after St. Jerome, um, there was a, a philosopher named Thomas Aquinas, and he came up with the term conscientia, which sounds a little more like conscience, right? And that's more like using your reason to try to figure out what the best thing to do is, right? So the other one came from God. It's just implanted in us, and we, deep down we just know. This one is like, you know, I have to go through that mental debate with the devil and the angel and reason things out, and then I come to figure out what the best thing is to do, what the most conscience related thing is to do, okay? So some different sources of this. Um, then uh, Sigmund Freud, right, the father of psychoanalysis, who was around the turn of the century, early 1900s, late 1800s. Um, so if you're in therapy, thank Freud, because he kind of created that sort of thing. So one of his main things was uh, the id, ego, and superego, right, he talked about. And you may have heard this before in an intro to psychology class. Okay, so the id, is pretty much like emotional mind, right? It's like all our inner drives and impulses and all that stuff. And ego to him is the healthy adult self, right? The healthy human adult self. And then the superego helps to keep the id in line, right? So the superego, he said, is like our internalization of the rules of society and the rules that we learned from our parents. Right? So instead of it coming through God or from reason, he's saying it's coming from other people. So from an external source in the human world, I've learned what's right and wrong, or I learned about interconnection to other people. And that's how I keep myself in line and how I reason through making a good decision. Right? And I would say, if you think about it, like all three have some truth, right? There's, there's different ways that we come about to commit, come up with our conscience or, and our morality and to make these wise mind decisions, okay? Um, the trouble with superego though, is it kind of could become in a little more of an extreme sense, like your critical inner voice, right? That, that voice in your head that makes you feel bad for screwing up. Like, oh, what's the matter with you? Don't do that. Oh no, you're gonna get in trouble. Oh, you're being such a bad girl. You're being such a bad boy, right? So sometimes that keeps us in line, but then it creates more guilt and shame and other you know, heartache and stuff like that. So it's not the ideal way, to manage our impulses, like there's other ways we know of now, like self-compassion and things like that, which are more effective. But sometimes our inner strategy is to use a superego, right? Which is kind of to beat ourselves up in order to keep us doing the right thing. Okay, so th this is from Freud, um, what he noticed and described. Okay, so here's another thing we come across sometimes, right? That they, we have kind of competing drives, right? There's things that we're trying to accomplish and they sometimes clash with each other. So on the one hand, sometimes in our life, in the certain areas of our life, we really wanna succeed, right? So whether it's um, succeeding as being a good student or a good um, worker at your job or a good parent or a good whatever, right? And you wanna succeed. And sometimes, you know, you'll do anything just to succeed, right? On the other hand, you also wanna, hopefully, think of yourself as a good person, right? You want people to see you that way, you wanna see yourself that way, you wanna be seen as somebody that's like caring and helpful and nice and kind and things like that. But sometimes these things can clash, right? So for example, right? Sometimes if you're in the business world, you might be tempted to lie or cheat or you know, mess with the books or something like that so that you can get ahead or to step on other people in order to climb to the top, you know? So that goes against your desire to be a good person because your desire to be successful is winning out. Other times you might be so focused on being nice and kind to people that you, you shy away from competition because you don't want to hurt anybody. So that gets in the way of your success. So it's always a challenge, like how we balance these two things. Like how do I ethically, um, keeping my interconnection with other people in mind, learn how to succeed and move forward in my life, right? It is possible to do both, but sometimes it could be a challenge, okay? So just putting that out there is something to think about. Okay, we're not gonna solve it all today, but we can certainly think about it. Okay, here's another thing, right? So let's suppose that on some level, right, we, we do have a conscience, right? Unless we're a psychopath, which I'll talk about next, but you know, if you have some sense of our interconnectedness with others and 
our, our uh, importance of making a decision that's good for the whole, right? Why do we act against that? You know, what gets in the way of us using our wise mind and acting with our conscience, right? So here's some examples, right? They say that if we're kind of physically out of it, you know, let's say we're, we're not, we're sick, we're in pain, we're tired, we're weak, we're just not feeling up to par, we're more likely to act against conscience, right? So maybe we don't have as much inner strength, even emotional strength to make those difficult decisions. And, and acting with conscience can sometimes be difficult, right? Um, other times, emotional mind gets in the way, oh, right? When we're driven by our emotions, they're driving the bus and they're just thinking about what's good for them, right? What's good for my fear? What's good for my anger? They're not think of, thinking of what's good for the whole. They're just thinking of what's gonna you know, take care of this emotion for me, right? So that could sometimes get in the way, mm, right? Why, so why it's important to move into wise mind and not act from our emotions all the time. Um, another thing is uh, going against our interconnection feelings. If we dehumanize certain people, we may not feel the need to act with conscience when it's in relation to those people, right? So if you're, let's say, you don't particularly like a certain religious group or a certain racial group or a certain um, other football team that's against your football team, <laughs> right? You might be less likely to act in a ethical conscience related moral way with that group because you see them as somehow less than you or less than human. So you feel like different rules apply, right? That's why years ago when there's slavery, you know, white people could go to church and pray and think they're good Christians and yet they can go home and have slaves, right? Because they felt like the slaves were less than human in some way. So they could act without conscience to them, right? That's how they justified it. Not that it's true but that's how they justified it. So we could do that on a smaller scale now, okay? So just to keep that in mind, how am I violating holism by making a group less than me? Um, other times, someone in authority might pressure us to act against our conscience. Like let's say you have a boss that's pressuring you to fudge the numbers in, on your job and to like tweak the books a little bit, right? You might feel pressured to do it even though it's not right, because you wanna stay in the good graces of your boss, you wanna keep your job, right? You ever hear also, um, like in the military, when people have done atrocious things like war crimes and they say, well, I was just following orders, right? Like that's kind of following authority and going against your conscience. Sometimes it's so much pressure that you just do it, okay? Even though you're maybe normally a good person, okay? Um, and finally, um, some of you might relate to this, like if you, have really intense symptoms of your mental illness, such as psychosis, or if you're in the midst of your addiction, you might do things you never would have done otherwise, right? So some people commit crimes when they're psychotic because voices are telling them to do things or they're having paranoid delusional ideas about people and they feel like they have to attack them before they attacked you, you know? So you may not be in your right mind and therefore how could you exercise conscience which involves your mind functioning properly, right? Um, and if you have a history of addiction, you might have been in a position where you were so fixated on getting your drug that you stole from people, right? Or that you were in, you know, you attacked somebody because it was all on the purpose of getting your fix, right? So it was totally against maybe who you really are, but under the influence, that's what happened, okay? So if we have acted against conscience, we have to learn from it, you know, try to figure out how we could put more conscience in there forgive ourselves the best we can, and have some living amends by doing the right thing going forward, right? Try to make up for it if you can, repair it if you can, and do the right thing going forward as best as you can, okay? So don't make this an excuse to get your super ego out and beat yourself up, all right? Okay, so just a quick note about psychopathy, right? So I'm sure you've heard things such as like sociopath, psychopath, antisocial personality disorder. Um, Psychopathy is pretty much somebody that doesn't have a conscience, okay? Biologically speaking, their brain does not function the same way as a regular person's brain, okay? So they don't have that emotion and that emotional connection that most people have. They don't have the ability to emotionally resonate with other people. They might be able to mentally resonate with other people where they can kind of mentally figure people out and find their vulnerable points and take advantage of people. But they don't have that emotional red flag 
that makes them feel like they're doing something wrong and they should stop it, right? So it's the equivalent of me putting my hand on a hot stove and not feeling the heat and not even thinking much of it, right? A normal person would put their hand on a hot stove and be like, oh my God, and pull their hand away, right? Like, ouch, you know, yeah, that's what your emotions do. They make you feel like, oh my God, that was terrible. I did something wrong. Your remorse makes you remember you did something wrong, right? So the feeling keeps you on the right path. But if you have no feeling to keep you on the right path and you don't feel much about hurting other people, it, do, it's, it doesn't mean anything to you. So you just keep doing it, right? Especially if there's some kind of reward involved, right? Such as getting ahead in your job and things like that. All right, so chances are most of you watching this are not psychopaths, but, but that's basically how that operates, okay? All right, so next, all right. Making moral choices slash acting with conscience, all right? So this is the stuff going forward for, for a little while now is about like, okay, so we wanna do the right thing, hopefully, right? Um, but there's all kinds of different reasons why we would make a particular choice. So something that looks good on the surface could be done for actually a variety of underlying reasons, right? So we're aiming to use the best kind of highest reasoning, the high, most wise mind reasoning for our choices, right? And I'm gonna give you some examples of how this works. So our intention matters, all right? So check this out. All right, so here's some examples. So these are all examples of quote unquote, doing the right thing or making a choice that's good for others, right? It reminds us of our interconnection. Okay, so, but there's also different reasons why we would do it. So for example, why would I drive safely? Is it just because I don't wanna get a ticket? Or is it also because I care about the people, myself and the people in my car and I don't want anyone to get hurt? Or is it because like, I just don't want to get into a car crash and go through the trouble with insurance and spend the money, right? There's all different reasons why I would drive safely. Um, what about helping someone in need? Am I doing it because someone told me to or because the person's guilting me into doing it or because out of the goodness of my heart, I'm trying to help somebody, right? So different motivations here. Um, even let's say walking from a fight or an argument. Am I doing it because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm weak, I'm a coward, because I'm afraid of confrontation? because I'm being the bigger person and I don't believe in violence because I don't want to hurt somebody, um, because I want to preserve the relationship, right? So there's different motivations for that too. We're in the middle of COVID-19 as I record this video. So wearing masks is a big thing. And there's a variety of reasons why we would wear a mask, right? Am I wearing a mask just to protect myself? Am I wearing it because I want to protect others from me just in case I had the virus and don't know it? Am I wearing it just because the government told me so? or my job told me so, right? So different reasons there too. And finally, um, why would I stay sober? Is it just because someone threw me kicking and screaming into a rehab? Or is it because I truly am starting to understand the negative impact it's had on me, my family, my health, my finances, and the quality of my life, right? So as you can see in these different examples, it'd be nice if but we could really understand the higher reasoning for doing these things and try to allow that higher reasoning to influence our different decisions as we, as we go forward, right? All right, so um, as we progress through moral development, and I'm gonna give some stages going forward after this, we kind of, the general theme is that we progress from a very selfish, self-centered orientation to a much more interconnected orientation, right? taking more and more people into account and from going from division, which is like me versus you or my group versus your group or we're better and you're worse and we deserve and you don't deserve, right? Which is very division oriented, very fragmented to a more holistic view, right? We're all in this together. We're all human beings. We're all sharing this planet, right? So the broader we cast that net, the more of a moral choice we tend to make, okay? And taking context into account. Okay, and uh, sorry, I, I, I said this wrong. I, I wanna just um, go to the second bullet for a second. So when we apply morals, in addition to those factors of the division and the holism and me versus the we, right? Or as Dan Siegel would say, we, right? Me plus we. Um, it's important for us not to be too black and white about the way we apply our morals and our values, okay? So for example, um, is it always wrong to lie, right? Generally, you would say, well, lying is bad, right? But there's certain circumstances why, when it's, it may be the most ethical, appropriate thing to do, right? If I had to lie to save someone's life, 
I would probably lie, right? Or is violence always bad, right? If you had to defend yourself or your, your kid, if your kid was under attack by somebody, would you feel that bad about kicking someone in the nuts? Well, probably not, right? It, I mean, when it's really important, certain things, taking the context into account, aren't always bad, right? So we have to be flexible about understanding how we apply morality and like what other factors we have to take into account, okay? So just keep that in the back of your mind, okay? All right, so here we go. So this is much more of um, a me-centered orientation. It's where, the ki where kids start when they're little. So why do kids do the right thing? It's mostly because they're afraid of punishment, right? Adults do this too. I mean, it's not you know, just kids, but this is the earliest level of moral development. So you may not have a clear sense about what's right or what's wrong, or you may not care very much about what's right or what's wrong. You're only doing the right thing to avoid punishment or getting in trouble, right? So it's like that example of not speeding on the highway just because I don't want to get a ticket. Okay, so it's not that I care about anybody. It's just like, I just don't want to pay that fine. Okay, so that's more of a punishment obedience orientation. Okay, next one is um, survival and self-interest, right? So I'm just going to do stuff that's going to help me, right? I'm mostly considered, considering me or maybe my family or my group and maybe certain things in order for us to get by or for us to survive, not really caring about other people. So during the pandemic in the beginning, people were rushing to the stores and buying out all the toilet paper and paper towels, like, you know, shopping carts and Costco with all kinds of stuff. Why? Because they were thinking about themselves. They weren't thinking, well, everyone needs to share this resource. They were just saying, you know what? I don't care about you. I'm just getting my paper towels. <laughs> okay, I'm stuck for this pandemic because who knows what's going to happen, right? So that's more of a survival and self-interest decision. It's not thinking about how we need to take care of everybody. Or if people went to the store and they bought out all the hand sanitizer or bought out all the masks, right? Even though healthcare workers in the beginning really, really needed it and there was a shortage, right? That's much more of a survival and self-interest. Okay, next. Um, so now we're moving from me a little bit more toward the we, but it's a little superficial, but it's, it's moving in the right direction. Okay, so social approval and conformity. Right, so this is about uh, like wanting to look good in the eyes of other people. Like, let's say I want my parents to think I'm a good girl, or I want my coach to think I'm a good uh, basketball player or, or a good kid, and I want him to like me, or I want my friends to like me. So that's why I'm doing a certain thing. Okay, so we're we're taking into account other people, but it's more it's still a little bit self-focused. Okay, and we may not do it because we think it's the right thing or the best thing. We're just doing it to get approval. Okay, or to be liked. Okay, so now we're branching out a little bit more. So now we're doing the right thing because you want to be a good citizen. You have a certain sense of duty to society and you, you want to, you know, uphold the laws of society and be part of that larger whole. And, you know, so therefore you follow the rules and the mores and the norms of society, right? So that's why, that's how you're doing the right thing, thinking about that, doing what society thinks is good. Okay, now different societies have slightly different views of that, but there are some gem general commonalities. Okay, all right, so now branching out a little bit further is one called social contract and individual rights. So basically, what this means is that when we put a society together, we kind of come up with almost like a contract that and we enter it together for the common good. So when they established the United States of America in 1776, they came up with the Constitution. Right? It was kind of like a contract that they put together saying, these are the morals we want to uphold, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right? And so we want everyone to be on board with this, and we're entering this contract for the common good. But since that time, you know, there's been a lot of you know, inequalities that have surfaced, that people have noticed and you know, felt the need to protest about and you know, say, hey, that's not fair. Wait, wait a minute. It's, this is benefiting some people but it's not benefiting all people, right? So life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness might be much more for white people, but not as much maybe for black people, or maybe you, you know, not for LGBT people, right? So maybe these principles aren't being applied equally, right? So if the laws aren't really upholding this, they have a right to be broken, right? Or we have a right to redo this social contract so it's really for the good of the people. Right. So this is about, you know, 
trying to be flexible with the laws and not just say it was just because it's the law, right? It means like the law is only as good as it, you know, upholds, it, it's good for everybody. But if it's not, it should be changed, right? And we have a right to voice that. Okay. Um, and finally, the highest of the high, <laughs> okay? Um, universal ethical principles. So when you keep those principles in mind, such as truth, justice, equality, human rights, holism, and you base your decisions on those, whether or not they're in line with what society is doing, right? It's really just what's best for the good of the whole in the long term and always keeping that in mind, right? So we moved all the way from selfish to these universal principles that are designed to be good for everyone, okay? All right, so that's the highest um, wise mind principle, okay? So um, I think that's it, okay, yeah. All right, so um, I hope that was uh, helpful in some way, right? Maybe it gives you a little bit more fuel to uh, beef up your wise mind, all right, and help you in some of your tough decision making, all right? Sometimes big things come up for us. So um, good luck with that. Hope that works out for you, and um, see you the next time. All right, bye, everybody.